religious leaders with us here, members of the praise, the choir and the entertaining groups, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, I greet you all. And Jamhuri ya Mugano wa Tanzania. This is how we greet that the United Republic of Tanzania, we should continue working. This is how we greet. Uh, on the outset, I wish to extend a very warm welcome to you all and to the, to the United Republic of Tanzania, the land of Kilimanjaro and Zanzibar. I hope you have traveled safely and you all are ready for the proceedings and deliberations of this 53rd Assembly of SADC Parliamentary Forum. My heartfelt thanks to the Speaker of our National Assembly, Honorable Dr. Tulia Axon, for the honor accorded to me as a guest of honor to officiate the opening of this forum. I further extend my gratitude to you all, Honorable Speakers, distinguished delegates, and invited guests for your participation in this August Assembly. I'm certain that for some of you, it is your first time to sit foot in Tanzania, and particularly in this historic touristic city of Arusha. I can assure you, as others have said, that Arusha hosts many touristic sites, and all of them await for your exploration. So welcome to your second home, Tanzania. Karibu Nisan. I would also wish to congratulate SEDEC Parliamentary Forum for the implementation of the strategic plan as presented here by the Secretary General of the SADC Parliamentary Forum, Madam Sigoma. Congratulations for the job well done. <laughs> On the issue of gender equality and gender equity in political endeavors, allow me to call upon all women parliamentarians and professional groups to join, to continue joining our efforts and raising our voices to call for justice to be done. This is, this is a war long fought. Changes are seen because we presented ourselves on the battlefield in 1995 and much has changed. Without that, Samia Suluhu wouldn't have stood here today as a president of Tanzania. So certainly changes are seen, changes are seen, but let's continue asking for more justice to be done. Um, I also wish to um, assure this gathering that my government is continuously taking affirmative actions in domestication or domestic domesticating the SADC model laws. So the work continues and uh, definitely the domestication will be done and you, ha you will be hearing from Tanzania. Um, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, currently, agriculture is the main source of employment and, of course, income for about 61% of the SADC regional population. Therefore, this is a sector of which our government should accord appropriate attention in order to realize the SADC Vision 2050 the AU Agenda 2063, and the UN 2030 Agenda. SADC is among the regions with the youngest population in the world. As such, global prediction requires us to create up to 12 million jobs every year over the next 20 years, so as to absorb 
the new entrants in the labor market. So on that note, allow me to briefly inform you on what is happening in Tanzania. According to the recent statistics, the youth in Tanzania aged 18 to 35 years constitute 60% of the total population. It is therefore imperative that we invest in our youth. And to this end, we have devised a number of strategies to attract the youth into agriculture. What is being done? I'm sure, as it has been said here, Bashe has explained a lot this morning on what is being done in Tanzania. And for us, agriculture comprises of crop farming, aqua farming, fisheries, livestock keeping, also honey production goes in agriculture. So our government has or is extensively investing in promoting agribusiness for youth through the program named Building a Better Tomorrow. This initiative is intended to capitalize on the underutilized potential of agriculture value chain. It is a flagship program to attract youth to indulge in investing and working in agriculture. We are facilitating, as a government, we are facilitating the access to land. These youths are giving land, each of them. We are facilitating the financial support, technology, market opportunity, and capacity enhancement. Um, in the first phase when we pronounced these opportunities, uh, we had an overwhelming request from the youth in thousands. And in the first phase, we managed to recruit only 812 who are now on training. And when the training is over, they are going to be enrolled in 13 incubation centers for hands-on skills and um, going to agribusiness and a block farming systems. So in the course of eight years to come, 2022 to 2030, we invested the sector to grow by involving the, these youths. We invested the sector to grow by 10% from the present 3.6% and expecting to create 1,500,000 direct youth employment opportunities. So this is where we are heading, and we have done a lot. We have increased the budget of the agriculture sector in four folds. We are now close to a trillion in this sector, trillion Tanzanian shillings. Distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, and the old saying goes, seeing is believing, I've learned with a sense of gratification uh, we'll, that you will have an opportunity to visit one of our BBT youth incubation centers located in Tengeru here in Arusha, just a few kilometers from here. I hope the visit will be a learning experience, an opportunity to share best practices and to help some, to help most Sadiq member states in the path to agrarian revolution. It is also our expectation that after your visit to the agricultural incubation centers, you will be in a position to share your ideas on how to improve our practices for an accelerated agrarian transformation. Furthermore, we have also continued to progressively increase, as I said before, budgetary allocation for the agriculture sector over the years with special emphasis in irrigation schemes and extension services. This is in conformity with the 2004 Dar es Salaam Declaration 
on agriculture and food security in the SADC region that requires government to allocate at least 10% of their national budgets to agriculture, as recommended by the African Union Declaration on Agriculture and Food Security in Africa. So we are trying to implement those declarations. I'm also delighted to inform you that our government has established an Agriculture Advisory Council that bears the function of advising the president on agricultural best practices and most effective approaches to expedite agricultural transformation in our country. The council pro, uh, uh, comprises of personalities with requisite skills and experience in agriculture and other sectors that tie in with agricultural development. As such, it is expected to be pragmatic and contribute significantly towards agricultural sector development in Tanzania. Distinguished members, ladies and gentlemen, in the SADC region, with a total, uh, total population of about 380 million, we have about 51.3 million of food insecure people as per estimation of 2020-2021, representing an increase of 25.7% from that of 2019-2020 in just one year. There has been an increase of food insecure people by 25.7% inside the region. This is unacceptable. The situation is worsened by the global conflicts and climate change that negatively impact the agricultural sector in majority of SADC countries. Yet we have a total of 9.85 million square kilometers which could make the region a food basket for Africa and beyond if effectively and properly leveraged. We have a vast uh, land for agriculture, but we have to do whatever we have to do to make use of this land on agriculture or food production so that we cover the gap that Africa or SADC region is said to be hungry. A myriad of coping mechanism can make food available and accessible to everyone in the region. Such interventions might include total commitment to the implementation of the various policies and strategies that have been uh, adopted from time to time, such as the 2014 SADC Regional Agriculture Policy, food production through input support programs, intra-SADC trade, Africa continental free trade area, blue economy and conservation agriculture to build the resilience. We are coming up with so many policy and policy programs, but we don't implement them. So this is a time we indulge in implementing our own policies for food production. At regional and global levels, we must endeavor to commit to the implementation of Agenda 2063, particularly its goal number five on modern agriculture for increased productivity and production, as well as goal number two of the Sustainable Development Goals that intend to attain zero hunger by 2030 through achieving food security, improving nutrition, and promoting sustainable agriculture. And so in order to overcome emerging challenges and realize our goals, we cannot underestimate the significance of national and regional parliaments. They have a critical role to play in its oversight role enactment of the much needed laws, policies and ratification of regional and global protocol that encourages agriculture development, but also speaking for the people whom you represent in your parliaments. 
So definitely, and certainly yes, our parliaments have a greater role to play in agriculture transformation. <laughs> Distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, on another note, I wish to seize this occasion to inform you that the United Republic of Tanzania will be hosting the 2023 Africa Food System Forum under the theme, Recover, Regenerate, Act. Under the theme, Recover, Regenerate, Act. Africa Solution to Food Systems Transformation, which is scheduled to take place in the first week of September 2023 in Dar es Salaam. I understand that the AGRF has already started posting registration forms on its website for those who will be interested to attend. And if I may request you, please make use of the opportunity to contribute to our overarching goal of creating a self-sufficient and food-secured continent. My government extends a warm welcome to each one of you to this important continental meeting. It is a hope that it, it will be another platform for us to come up with practical and contextualized solutions to agriculture and food security issues. Ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, it is my firm belief that deliber uh, deliberations that will stem from your discussions will go a long way in transforming the agricultural sector in the SADC region and Africa at large. And let me join the honorable speaker in calling upon you, distinguished delegates, to find time out of your busy schedule to visit some of the world classic touristic attractions here in Arusha, and if circumstances permit, in other places in our country. Zanzibar in the southern highlands have peculiar natural features to attract tourism, so don't miss seeing them. Having said that, it is now my singular honor and privilege to declare that the 53rd Assembly of the SADC Parliamentary Forum is officially opened, and I wish you fruitful deliberations. I thank you for your kind attention and may God bless you. Thank you very much. Your